As far as my favourites and dream cars go, this is one of the ones which has developed into earning a place on this list in a more recent time, actually, in comparison to a lot of others here. And that's the case with a few cars, but not that many. Not many of them have been as recent as this for me, because my love for this car, the Callaway C12, has been really developed much more so than it ever was before in the past year or so. And the reason why I love the car is, as with many of my favourites, a multifaceted thing. It's not about one particular thing that I love this car. I love it for a lot of things. Now, I love vehicles which have almost like an interesting point wherever you look. And I think that's, although not personally for me, but that's the case with a lot of people for stuff like the Porsche 918, or the LaFerrari, or the McLaren P1, because it's the kind of car that you can look at any part of the vehicle and have an interesting discussion about it. For me, cars like the Zonda fall into that category. Every single nook and cranny and detail is meticulously designed, very well engineered, and perfectly executed. Now this, in a less obvious way, is kind of like that for me, because this car, although you wouldn't expect it, manages to blend a surprising amount of usability and practicality and also, weirdly enough, attainability into a category of car which usually wouldn't have that, or at the very least isn't known for it, and that is supercars. Because for those who are perhaps completely unfamiliar with Callaway as a brand, Callaway is a company which in a similar way to companies like Roof, for instance, or some of the Japanese tune houses, Tommy Kaira, for instance, more so a little bit, they go beyond just tuning a car and they actually almost redesign the vehicle. It's a much more bespoke version of a car, which is redeveloped in terms of performance and engineering and tech. They redesign the look, the interior, everything about it. That's exactly what this is, because the C12 is based on a C5 Corvette which is not one of my absolute favourite Corvettes, but it makes a great basis to work from. It's a big, spacious sports car, tons of trunk space, great engine to work with, and that's what they took and worked from. Now this car, incidentally, was also developed into a race car, the C12R, but that one I don't like quite as much, and the reason why goes back to what I was discussing earlier. One of the main reasons why I love this car is because it's surprisingly practical. And when I say practical, I don't just mean how many seats it has or what the fuel economy is. To me, when I say practical, I mean a car that can serve multiple purposes. And although this may seem to be a strange definition under that, the fact that this car is a target top, I include in that. Now, for those who don't know what a target top is, it's a convertible, basically. But a target top is a little bit visually different because you generally have one centre panel on the roof right above your head that you can take off. And it's usually a hard panel rather than a soft top, and then you can store it in the trunk. Now, Koenigseggs have that. The Maserati MC12 has that. The Cadillac Sien has it. And it's very different, and of course many others, the NSX as well, but it's different to a convertible because it's not a case where you fold the whole roof down into a compartment behind the seats. And it's not like a CC, or like a Peugeot or a Renault CC, where the tin top folds up into the trunk, taking up all the boot space. This is a little bit different, because with this, it's just one relatively small panel that you can unclip and remove, so that you've got the open air feel, but you've still got this almost roll bar-esque shape almost like a buttress behind the seats, which looks fantastic. And personally, I think there are a few things that look better than a Target Top sports car. They look incredible to me. It's one of my favorite vehicle designs. If you take a supercar and can legitimately make it a Target Top without ruining the shape, I think that's an impressive thing. And this car pulls it off very well. Now, in terms of everything else, it has a ton of trunk space. It's a very spacious car, and it's also a, a very big car as well. In terms of ground area, it's a similar kind of size to a Porsche 962 Longtail, which is a pretty big car. It's wider, longer than the normal Corvette C5, and although the performance isn't hiked up to a ridiculous degree, it's not like a 250 mile per hour supercar or anything like that, although of course Callaway has, you could say, some experience with 250 mile per hour Corvette based vehicles, the Sledgehammer in particular, this one is much more restrained, and it has more of the joy of driving kind of approach, which again, I love. This car isn't designed to break records, either in a straight line or around a track. It's just designed to be a really desirable alternative to, say, 
Euro supercars, or even some other American ones, or, you could say, to a Corvette. Now, of course, it's a lot more expensive than a Corvette, but you can still buy one of these used for a similar price, or sometimes even less, than a Ford GT. So you're looking at like 100 to 120 grand for one of these now. And recently, one was actually sold by Callaway in their auction. They auctioned off a number of their cars, and it didn't sell. And I think stuff like that is such a shame when you see these gorgeous cars that people just maybe have moved past or they never liked it much in the first place or the climate of supercars has changed, which of course it always is. But I think that's sad that a car like this wouldn't sell at an auction. That shocks me because it's such a cool machine. Now the performance is better than a Corvette would usually be of the time, but it's still slower than some of the newer Corvettes, which isn't too surprising. Now the power is in the say mid 450 region, but of course being a Corvette engine, you could quite easily take it higher if you wanted to. For me that wouldn't be necessary of course, but for many people that would be another enticing layer to the car. You could potentially make it a pretty decent rival to something like a Celine as an example. But for me this is one of those cars which in a similar way to a Corvette is on my list because it's a dream car. And up until as I said, around the last year or so, this was not one of my dream cars. I was first introduced to Callaway as a brand on Gran Turismo 4, and I didn't love the C12, but it certainly caught my attention. To me, it looked like a very oversized Aston Martin mixed with a Corvette with those kind of comical Vauxhall Tigra rear lights, which of course is still kind of a joke because they do really look like that. However, over more recent times, it's really grown on me to the point where I love the car, and this is one of the relatively few out of this entire list. Out of the 50 cars, there are probably 20 or less, which I would say are not just favorites, but they are dream cars. Ones which if I had that kind of cash, I wouldn't just like in an abstract sense, but I would want to actually buy one. And to me, the Callaway C12 is one of those. It's not necessarily an expected choice, and it's one which I think a lot of people probably wouldn't understand having a lot of love for. It could certainly seem like a supercar that you could just give or take, who really cares? But I really like it. I like how different it is, I like how exclusive it is, and I like that it treads the fine line of being genuinely different, but not gimmicky. It's a car which looks like it should have been made by some company that doesn't need to be based on a Corvette, it just looks like its own thing. And I think that's fantastic. Definitely one of my favourites, and of course, if you are new to this countdown, you can check out all of the others in the list by clicking through at the end. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.